Welcome to Shorty Supercoach and welcome to another player profile. Merry Christmas. I think I'll be scheduling this one around Christmas. So Shorty's probably a few pina coladas deep at this point in time, but uh, hopefully having a good day, enjoying a couple of days off. But I wanted to take a look at one of my favorites and a guy that I think I'll definitely be starting next year. And I've, I've started these player profiles with just a few of my favorites, a few guys, makes it easy ones that I'm pretty confident I'll be picking unless they cop a few injuries, and uh, that's Clayton Oliver. And you're probably thinking, yeah, it's a pretty safe, solid pick, nothing too sexy about that, but I actually think there's a smidgen of value in Clayton Oliver next season. Now, he averaged 109.4 last year, which is below his last couple of seasons. 2017, after that big breakout, I think 2016 averaged about 70. Then he went bang up to 111.5 after slimming down and he looked so different first day of pre-season. And it really showed he came out and scored real well. 2018, 114.7. And that was when I think we all were thinking, gee, this is just going to be the norm. Clayton Oliver, 115, more often than not. And I remember doing the podcast with Langers at some stage and, and actually discussing with Cripps. I was like, oh, gee, I... I might be leaning towards Oliver, slight point of difference. I think they'll average similar. Well, it was, you know, quite drastically different in their years. Cripps took it to another level or at least continued his outstanding stuff. Where Oliver, like many Melbourne players, really had a stinker, at least for some of the season early on. Now, stinker is probably a bit of a tough way to say. 109.4 and you've had a stinker. That's it's not too bad, but... I want to just dissect this season a bit. And it's worth noting that the Demons had so many players in the rehab room at this stage last year. And Oliver was one of them. Two shoulder reconstructions, I believe it was. And it did show at times. I think he wasn't fragile, but it did get discussed that maybe he just wasn't hitting the pack as hard. He was looking to gather and quickly handball it off rather than taking the tackle and, and then disposing of it. I thought that criticism was a bit tough at certain stages, but there was no doubt that his early stages of the season just weren't as good as his back end. Now, the Demons were pretty crap throughout the whole season, so we can't put it down to wholly team form, but I think definitely as he got more confident with those shoulders and put a bit more training into him, he pushed hard to be even right for round one, and while he had some great games early in the season, which I'll touch on, the consistency wasn't there but I think he was a shining light for Melbourne in the back half of the year. And I guess one of the only guys that could hold his head reasonably high, him and Gorn were certainly the clear ones that could say, look, a reasonable season. And um, Salem was probably another one. You could probably pick out a couple of others if you like. But 109.4 was the overall average, which will have him priced reasonable. I think that's unders. I see him averaging about 115. Um, But I, I broke the season up into rounds 1 to 10, and then rounds 11 to 23. So about halfway through the season, rounds 1 to 10, he averaged 104.6. And as I said, he had some big games, 175 against the Suns and 141 against the Cats. Now, the Ds were poor throughout the season, as I said, but rounds 11 to 23, he picked his form up, averaged 113.3. So a big difference. And that second half of the season was back to the numbers that we've seen so often, around that 110 to 115 mark, which I think we can safely lock in for Oliver because he's always around the contest, a great ball winner, clearance king, and tackles hard. Now, I broke it down a bit further. I I find it interesting to have a look at the real exact numbers just to give you an idea of what some players are going to give you. In terms of tonning up, Oliver rounds 1 to 10, 5 times, 5 out of 10, you know, 50% strike rate for hitting the ton. Rounds 11 to 23, 9 out of 12. So he bumped that up to 75% and was hitting the 100 very, very regularly. 110 plus, just three of those in the first 10 rounds, seven in the second half. So seven of those nine were 110 plus, And he had a couple of 140s, I think a 150. In terms of going below 90, which I think for premium midfielders, We want their poor games to be high 80s or 90s. You don't want them copping your 70s too often and certainly not anything less. But below 90, rounds 1 to 10, he had three of those, including a 53. I'd have to double-check whether he was injured at all or or tagged heavily. 
He's a pretty tough guy to tag. Rounds 11 to 23, just one. That was round 17, and that was just a 75. So I've painted the picture. It couldn't be clearer. Second half of the season, he found the goods for whatever reason. Melbourne supporters may know better than me. I put it down to a combination of sort of coping with how the side is going and, and sort of a different side to what the Ds were previously and more so the injury. I think any time you have an interrupted pre-season, it takes a bit of time. And while you may play every game, it's not always at your absolute best. And sometimes you just got to find a way to get through the games. And I would say by the second half of the season, he was coping much better and, and getting to absolute match hard and full fitness. And bear in mind, he's only 22. You know, I mean, by the time the season rolls around, he'd be nearly 23. But he's still very young. You know, you'd say he's entering his absolute prime. He'll hit the 100 game mark next season. This should be, if we look at history, his best three to four years are coming up. And he's already produced some whopping averages year on year. So, look, I'll, I'll definitely be picking him. Um, I'd be shocked if I didn't because I'm a big fan. I love how he just wins it around the contest. It's great having a midfielder that you know the team just loves him having him in there all the time. He's always in there. They love him in the centre bounce more often than not. The Ds roll a few through there, but he's their mainstay. So let me know what you think. I'll be doing a few more of these style of videos over the new year and also a few, I guess, more prediction ones. Hopefully you enjoyed um, my sort of top five of players I think can explode and a few different things like that. So I'll, I'll take a bit of a look and I'll also attempt to get the Instagram going a little bit better. But let me know what you think. Subscribe away. And even though I'm doing this on a Saturday, so I'm about to crack one of these bad boys open. But if you do head out on the weekend and you're a Geelong person, get to the Geelong Hotel. You might see Shorty floating around. But this probably won't be posted on a day that you're hitting the clubs. But hey, just keep it in mind. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.